Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be planting a range of trailing and creeping plants. We have another one that isn't here right now, it's baby tears. But the first one we'll be planting is actually the creeping fig. Now I've always wanted one of these in my tank but I find them kind of difficult to find. Luckily I did find one in a reptile shop not too long ago. But basically you usually see these in frog tanks, especially dart frog tanks, because they really thrive in high humidity areas. So I'm interested to see how they do in a crested gecko tank. Um, but what I will do is give it its own planter, hopefully it fits, and so I can control that one area and make sure it has lots of water. Now, even though some plants do like wetter conditions, it is good to have a lot of drainage. And in this particular planter, it doesn't have the drainage layer like the hydro balls. So I'm gonna be making that up with a bit of perlite and I may also mix this in with a substrate to just help with drainage. So back here's the plant I wanna use. However, it is quite full of substrate because it originally did have a plant in there uh, a couple years back. But then recently, I say in the last few months, Lyra has been going in there. She's been spending a lot of time in there. And I'm slightly worried she's laid eggs in there. So I will sort of try to empty that out and check whatever is in there. So this is what I got out of the plant at. It is a sort of difficult place to plant things. It's very much right at the back. But the creeping fig, as you can probably tell by its name, likes to creep up and cover the background. So I thought this would be a great area to put it. It also gets a nice amount of light, not too much, but probably enough. I know if they have a higher amount of light, they grow a bit quicker. But, you know, I think this is probably one of the best spots for the creeping fig. So for the substrate, I'm using Earth Mix. I'm also using some of that stuff I already took out of here. Because, um, you know, waste not want that. And what I will also add in here is a bit of perlite as well, just to add to the drainage. Um, as you can see, it's very dusty. So I'm just going to mix a bit in. I'm also going to mix water in with this because one time I did add in some Earth Mix, I thought it felt quite damp and fine for the plants. And though I watered it, I think because it probably wasn't very hydrated, it drew a lot of the water away from some of the plants that were in there and like killed my zebra plant because it had no water in the end. So I'd like to add a bit of water before I add it in now. Another thing I like to do is I don't like to put in the entire plant. I like to keep some aside and grow it separately because there is a chance that when you put it in your tank, it's not going to do well or your cleanup crew is going to basically destroy it so what I usually do with any plants I put in the tank is I have a separate one that I can grow independently outside the tank so here's the creeping fig I did start to film putting it in but then I soon realized I did not have enough room around the tank for <laughs> me to get in there to properly plant it so I did stop filming um, so I could move the tripod and everything but it is nicely in there um, but what I will do before I leave it is I made these little I don't know what you'd call them clips out of this galvanized garden wire I ended up buying 20 meters of it um, I only need like three little clips because this isn't particularly big but I wanted to use it to sort of tr start to train the creeping fig to climb up the background and hopefully that's the way it does go as I said though it's not overly big yet so it doesn't need too much teaching but We'll see. It may have been slightly difficult to see, but if I pull back this leaf, you can kind of, can you see a little metal bit? And this is sort of holding it there. But yes, that's a creeping fig done. On to the next plant. This next plant is called a maidenhair vine. It does actually have many names, but that's one I know it by. I actually got this from Global Geckos. I went to the actual shop. I know if you're in the UK, you've probably heard of their website and a lot of people told me to go to their shop. And this is what I got from there. Um, so this particular plant can deal with full sun and also partial shade. I have a planter in Drogo's tank that's actually in quite a bit of shade at the moment that I hope to plant this in. So as you may be able to see, this plant of Drogo's has got out of hand. Um, I believe this is pronounced coleus or coleus Co coleus maybe they're usually brightly colored leaves we ended up growing one with just green because we actually grew this from a seed and now it's letting off lots of other seeds so maybe we get more but the plant i want to put the maiden hair vine in is this one here so as you can see in some areas it has some light in others there's a lot of shade So 
now we have a nice little drainage layer. I don't know if, I, oh, there's a spider. Do you see the little spider? We have so many spiders. Um, so we have a little drainage layer. I think eventually down here there's another one. I don't know if you should be following my instructions. I don't know if this is correct. This is just what I'm doing. And now we're gonna mix up the dirt like we did before. So once again, I'm only gonna put part of this plant in and kind of save the most, but if you see, there's only, I don't know if it's hard to see, but this all comes from quite a small area, so it'd be difficult to separate it. Honestly, at this point, <laughs> I've got dirt everywhere, but these vines are so, they come down to such a small point that I might actually just have to put the entire plant in here. Right, sorry I couldn't film putting this in. Basically, I got dirt all over the floor. My hands were covered in dirt. I couldn't operate the camera and I was like, I need to get this plant in. So I didn't film putting it in, but it's in now. And as you can see, it's massive. It's taken over everything. Um, there, there's some arguing going on between these two plants. I'm trying to put some of the vines up here because then they get a lot more light. Um, and hopefully, like, they might start to cover up the branches up here because I think that could look cool. But we shall see, like, at the end of the day, the woodlice may just completely destroy this and eat this like they do with, like, 90% of the plants I put in here. So, <laughs> this is definitely an interesting plant, but I think there's a lot going on. So, the next plant is Baby Tears, also sometimes known as Mind Your Own Business. And if you want to realise how big this is, this is my hand. This is a bush. This is a massive bush. Um, basically, we started off with this plant. It was a five pound plant. It was fairly small. It got very, very big and we had to replant it. And now, like, it goes all down the sides. It will creep into other plant pots we have and try to grow. Basically, if you have this in like your garden, it's seen as a weed. But I kind of like it because it trails, it covers everything, and I want the floor of Lyra's tank to be like this. The only problem I found is the wood lice destroy it almost instantly. So, now we have this massive plant. We actually took a few cuttings from this, some dying bits off the side, and put it in a tray with some aquarium substrate. And, um... <sighs> It's massive. <laughs> it is basically a carpet of baby tears. So here's Lyra on a snake plant. I want to put the baby tears down here. Now down here, as you can see, I've got like an old food bowl. The uh, isopods will clean that. They've got some food in here. They've got some old leaves. But really, I'd love to see the baby tears cover this area. So I'm going to spray it down a lot first because I have found that baby tears love water. And this soil can dry out quite quickly. You can see it's quite dry under here. So we're going to get a bit good watering and then pop in the plant. Now as I said when we were planting this in with the fish tank stuff it was basically dead and we didn't know if it was actually going to grow but we thought we'd give it a chance. It was just some dried crispy bits on the side and we're like let's let's try it. So the thing with baby tears is as long as it doesn't get eaten <laughs> it should spread very well. Um, so the first few days are kind of crucial because we want it to get established and unfortunately because this isn't a new tank we can't just leave it without cleanup crew. Um, and at this point it's physically impossible to remove all the isopods. We're going to just have to take a risk and hope that we put in enough at least some of it will survive. Okay, we really didn't need much. I think two or three bits of this. I didn't realize quite how stringy it is. It looks quite messy right now. I think basically we just need to put it in, get it established and it will sort itself out hopefully. So I'm gonna let you into a bit of a secret. Between planting this and the creeping fig, it had been a week and then I planted the baby tears, does that make sense? So I've just planted the baby tears, this has been in here a week and I figured I'd do an update. So it's still alive, it hasn't actually been eaten, which I'm shocked by, I haven't even seen the isopods on it. I did put in a load of custodian fuel in there after I planted it so they would eat that. I'm going to put some leaves in in a sec but I'm very happy that it's alive. I hope it continues to do well. But one thing I noticed with Drogo's tank, right, because this this plant, like, it's still, look, all the little flowers and seeds coming off. It's, it's flopped. It has flopped because it's too tall for this tank now. And actually we've got some things coming along here. But essentially what takes up this entire 45 by 45 by 60 tank is 
three plants and each one we obtained a different way. So this one as I said we grew from a seed, the golden pothos in the back was grown from a cutting and this one we got from a shop and planted it. But three plants can completely fill this tank and I actually have a cool picture of Drogo in this tank before the coleus um had bloomed and everything so it's a bit shorter than but you can kind of see the scale of it in there it looks like a jungle beneath him it's so cool so when people you start building these tanks i'm the same i put loads of different plants about only three filled the entire thing up so that's pretty cool but um, i'm going to do an update on the creeping fig and then we'll be back to put in some leaves so the creeping fig is back here, once again, still alive. I am shocked. I haven't seen any isopods on it either. I don't know if it's necessarily grown much since I filmed, um, but it's alive and I'm happy. It's really easy to just water this planter and make sure it gets enough water that it needs. Now we're going to take some leaves to put into the tank. Leaves are amazing for bioactive tanks. It allows the isopods to break them down and enrich the soil and also gives them a little bit of a house away from the predator that lives in their tank. So I like to crunch them up a bit. I like to just put them around everything on the floor. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you, because the reason there was a break between the planting the plants is though I had to plant the tank anyway I was debating whether or not to film it because I imagine although on the, I did a poll on YouTube and a lot of people wanted to see this video when it comes down to it I think like five people are going to watch it I don't think anyone's going to care so <laughs> if you have watched it thank you and if if you know people or groups or anyone who's interested in bioactive tanks and crested geckos and chihuahuas, if you could share this video that'd be amazing because I feel like I've lost a lot of crested gecko viewers. Whenever I try to do crested gecko videos now, they don't seem to do that well and it's a shame because I'd love to feature like Lyra and like Drogo my chihuahua a lot more. Um, but yeah, that would mean a lot to me. And once again, I'm going to put a load in with Lyra. And I'm also going to put in some custodian fuel because these pellets, the what did I go crazy for? And I really need to distract them away from the baby tears because they will destroy them. Also, these leaves smell so nice. They smell absolutely lush. I think it's a chestnut. Now for the custodian fuel. I like to just sprinkle it around. You're meant to push it down into the ground, but I find the wood lice find it anyway. So I just pop it anywhere. So it's been a few days, in that time I've got a cold, <laughs> I've lost my voice and now it's very deep. Um, but the baby tears are still alive and I was watching the woodlice last night and they were far more interested in the leaf litter than the baby tears, like they'd walk over the baby tears but they weren't eating it so <laughs> I'm so happy. I even think, is the creeping fig getting bigger? I feel like it's got bigger. Anyway, um, I'm not sure if I'll do a video on updating these plants because honestly I don't think anyone cares. But if you are one of the few that do, um, follow me on Instagram or Twitter because if this really grows and, you know, we have a whole carpet of baby tears, I'll be posting it on Instagram and or Twitter because <laughs> that's what I do. So all my links are below, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching guys and goodbye.